Thank, thank you for introducing me. My name is Nobuyuki Kato from the University of Tokyo. So I'm today I'm going to talk about the Xenon N10 experiment, which is the, the next upgrade of the Xenon uh, dark matter project. So the Xenon, the Xenon experiment is done by the Xenon collaboration and uh, people from uh, 28, 28 institutes from uh, Europe, US and Asia is joining and about 170 scientists and students are working to detect uh, WIMP dark matter. So yeah, this is the Xenon dark matter project history. So the, the Xenon dark matter project started as Xenon 10 uh, about 15 years ago. And since then it became larger and larger and the sensitivity became higher and higher. So in today's talk, I am going to talk about uh, Xenon and Ton, which is the, the, the next, which is the upgrade of our project and, and aim to start this year. So this is uh, the brief introduction of how the, our detector uh, performs, but uh, Mark already explained about this working principle very well. So I don't explain in so much detail, but uh, I will only explain something related to the later part of my, my talk. So first, uh, I think Mark explained that we have S1 and S2 signals and we use these two signals to, to, to detect dark matter or discriminate background. And in S2, we, we, we need to drift the electrons. And if the liquid xenon is, has a, a lot of electronegative impurity, this electron is captured and the S2 signal get weaker. So we have to take care, we have to keep the, the xenon very clean. So we, we have a new system for the purification. And also, uh, neutrons and WIMP, our target, has does the same type of uh, recoil, the interaction, so it can be a dangerous background, we cannot distinguish. So we also have a new hardware to, to reject neutrons. And also we have, uh, uh, okay, so uh, we, we know that we can discriminate nuclear recoil and electron recoil by the, by the, the style of uh, signals. But of course, some electron recoil event leaks into the nuclear recoil and it looks like WIMP. So it, it's also important to reduce the electron recoil background. So we have a, a, a additional uh, a subsystem to reduce such electron recoil background. And uh, Right, so I want to talk about Xenon and Tom, but actually Xenon and Tom reuses most of the Xenon and Tom facilities. So, and uh, because we are reusing it, we, we can actually fast, we can faster upgrade the, the experiment. So first I explain about Xenon and Tom, and then we are going to explain what is new in Xenon and Tom. So in Xenon one tone, we have a TPC, of course, this is the heart of our, our detector. And, uh, and this detector is inside the water tank. This is a passive shield from the radioactivity. And this water tank also serves as a muon veto. And in the right building, uh, in this building, there is uh, many subsystems. And then on the top floor, we have a cryogenic system, which we need to keep 100, minus 100 degrees liquid xenon. And also we have a purification system to keep uh, liquid clean. And in the middle floor, we have a DAQ and slow control system. And in the bottom floor, we have a Krypton distillation system and uh, Xenon storage. And for Xeno and Tom, we have several new subsystems to achieve very low background and uh, large exposure. First, we have a large Xeno and Tom experiment and Tom TPC in the center of the water tank. But, and in, in the, around the TPC, we have a neutron veto system, which reject the neutron background. 
And in the building, we have a new radon distillation system. This is uh, radon is an uh, electron recoil background, but this is uh, the, the biggest enemy of our experiment. So we want to remove it and we have uh, dedicated hardware to, to remove it. And in and the bottom floor, we have a liquid xenon purification system, which enables the faster cleaning of uh, electronegative impurities. And uh, yes, we, since we use uh, uh, about nine tons of xenon, we have a new xenon storage and the recovery system to enable a safe and stable uh, operation. And this is a xenon TPC. So this is a larger TPC, which can contain about 5.9 tons of liquid xenon. And uh, the fiducial volume is expected to be about four ton, which is about three times the xenon one ton. And yeah, we have a two arrays of PMT on the bottom and the bottom and the top. And in total, we have a 494 photomultipliers, multipliers, which is again, this is about twice the xenon one ton number. And the dimension is about 1.5 meter tall and 1.3 meter diameter. And this is the picture during the assembly of the TPC. And the next one is the liquid xenon purification system. So in xenon one tone, the purification was done in gas phase. So we needed to, to extract the liquid xenon, evaporate and flow through the getter and condense it before uh, return to the detector. So it was not very fast to operate uh, xenon one tone, such a large amount of xenon. But in this subsystem, we extract liquid xenon from detector directly and flow through oxygen filter in liquid phase. So everything happens in liquid phase. And yeah, oxygen is the main electronegative impurity that captures drift electrons. So we need to, to remove this oxygen. And uh, the oxygen is actually removed by the filter and uh, the, the chemical reaction of copper is used. At, so I mean, the oxidation of copper is used to remove the oxygen. And uh, liquid circulation is quite fast because of the, the, the density difference of gas and liquid. For example, five liters per minute liquid circulation correspond to 2,500 SLPM in gas. To compare, right, the xenon one ton gas circulation was about 100 SLPM. So you can see that this number is very big. And uh, we also have a live purity measurement system in the flow path of liquid xenon. So we can always know the, the quality of xenon in our detector. And the next subsystem is called neutron veto. As I said, the single scattering neutrons are background. Of, uh, is a dangerous background of wind search. So, and the uh, neutron veto system is surrounding the TPC and which is made of the PTFE reflector and uh, 120 additional PMTs. And uh, in the water tank, we dissolve the gadolinium sulfate since because the gadolinium has a high neutron capture cross section. And uh, when the interacting neutron comes out of the detector, the neutron ca is captured by gadolinium and decay by uh, 8 MeV gamma emission. And this gamma create a Cherenko flight in the water tank and uh, these uh, new additional PMT detect that. And by simulation, the neutron tagging efficiency is uh, calculated to be around 87%. And the uh, next one is uh, called the radon distillation system. So yeah, this is uh, uh, yeah, the hardware to remove radon. Since radon 222 is the biggest source of a background in our experiment. Although this one is an uh, electron recoil background, uh, this is the, the biggest source of our background. And uh, since the half-life is about four days, uh, once this radon is em emanated at somewhere far, far away in the detector or subsystem, it can easily get into the inner volume of the detector. And uh, we are going to have an online radon distillation system. This works as follows. So the liquid xenon comes in and uh, we have a condenser and reboiler 
And so the xenon condenses the top and, re and revolves in the bottom. And the, since radon stays more in liquid than, ga than gas, so radon accumulates at, at the bottom liquid phase and uh, the gas phase become cleaner. So, so we extract this of, uh, cream radon to the detector to, and return to the detector. <laughs> the technique is already tested in Xeno 100 and Xeno 1 ton. And uh, thanks to the, the, the screening effort and this radio distillation, our target concentration radon is about one microbacterium per kilogram. And uh, yeah, we have a bug and uh, we, est and uh, right. We estimated the background of the of Zeno and Tom. And yeah, for the electron recoil background, we uh, uh, we still have radon 222 as the main, the main background, but uh, from Zeno and Tom, uh, we reduce about a factor 4.5. And for neutron re nuclear recoil background, we have a radiogenic neutrons and the high energy neutrinos at the same level. And uh, we have uh, we and based on that background estimation, we calculated the sensitivity of our experiment. And uh, with the five year of, of operation, we are expected to have a sensitivity more than one order of magnitude higher than the current best set best limit set by xenon one ton. And yeah, I will skip the electron recoil part because Mark already mentioned about that. And yeah, currently the commissioning of our experiment is going on. We installed the TPC, we constructed the neutron veto, this is a new subsystem. And also we started filling the liquid xenon in the detector. So despite in these COVID times, many commissioning activities are ongoing. I myself is also here in Italy working on this commissioning work. And also we, already saw the, the, the xenon signal and also the preparation of data processing and the software side is going on. And we, start, we aim to start data taking by the end of uh, this year. Okay, so this is the, the summary of uh, my talk. So Xeno and Tone is an upper grade of Xeno one Tone aiming to search for dark matter with another order of magnitude higher sensitivity. And uh, I focus on the new subsystems of Zeno and Tom because they are the keys to achieve unprecedented level of background exposures. And many commissioning works are going on site. That's it from my, from my side. Thank you very much.